I wanted to ask you why did you decide to become a biodynamic farmer and not only an organic farmer? Mm. Mm. Me or I both, ask you huh? both. Mm. <laughs> you first. Then. Why did you decide to become a biodynamic? Um, I I knew the anthropology when I was a teacher, and um, I want to teach something more better than public education idea, and then knew that Steiner's idea is really huge, and also that I'm interested in farming and agriculture and. and these the biodynamic um, agriculture course and that really really be beautiful and big huge and then um, the old anthropology um by the Steiner's idea it's knocked me knocked me right. <laughs> <laughs> and since then I'm not so much interested in just only farming I mean not only organic I mean, it's something more work with a uh, uh, huge view. That's why I decided to farm mm -hmm. biodynamically. And you? Well, I, I got into biodynamics uh, when Hugh Courtney came to speak at our or organic gardening class. And I, was, I just wanted to learn how to make better compost in the beginning. He said, well, you have to add these uh, preparations to it. So what is that? And I, then that's what, then I was interested from that moment on in the biodynamics. I just want to make better compost. But then, you know, when I met economy, this was, uh, I mean, economy has been together now for about eight years, nine years, something like that. But uh, she has helped me uh, see more of anthroposophy. And uh, when I was doing, one just wanted to make better compost, Got to reading How to Know Higher Worlds and Theosophy and you know, all, all those other books, and she introduced. And then I met her, and she introduced uh, uh, the Gospel of Saint John by uh, Rudolf Steiner. And then you start talking about religion, and I said, but the next thing I knew, I was doing inner work, you know, inter, inner work, working on my soul. And then it's, uh, I'm still doing it, and I, I love every bit of it, every minute of it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So uh, from uh, organics to biodynamics was first compost, and it was inner work, I guess. So you're convinced that the biodynamics make the best compost of oh, definitely, yeah. every <laughs> agriculture yeah. system? Of course, I haven't seen all the other kinds of compost, but I know what it does for the earth. Mm -hmm. I know what it does for me and the, the health mm -hmm. of our CSA members and their children. And, and what it does for the soil, it's, uh, it's you know, it's, it's allowing the uh, the earth to breathe, and that's one of the things we're our agriculture is having a problem with these days. We're compacting the soil too much with the chemicals and, and the, the machines, tractor driving, the heavy machines. driving up too much tractors mm -hmm. and plowing and not doing the crop rotation or cover crops. You know, there's a lot of bad techniques out there that. Oh yeah, uh, that would be my next question. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, what are the main differences between organic and biodynamic agriculture, or also agriculture and biodynamic? Oh. Mm. I think the organic is just uh, maybe more many many idea, but the mainly it's just safety or healthy food. I think. But the, reason, huh? and some of them is more smart and then more connected to the cosmic, but uh, not so much. Um, the Steiner's biodynamic, I think, is a more uh, practical. Mm -hmm. I don't know what yeah. Yeah, hands on. Hands on and then, um, doing something and thinking. <laughs> mm. You know, I always thought there was a. Um, Three basic principles to biodynamics that I learned from uh, Hugh Courtney. Uh, he uh, wrote a book on what is biodynamics, and he outlined uh, three basic principles for biodynamics. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're good ones. Um, first one is um, that uh, you try to keep the farm as an individual, as an organism, 
Don't buy something from outside the farm. Grow your own herbs. Control your own uh, control your own insects and weeds with the things that are there in the calendar. And um, try to have the proper amount of animals and land so you don't have to buy food from the cows or sell the cows because you don't have enough food. So try to keep a balance. Mm -hmm. So that's what we talk about when we talk about organism as an individuality. And the second principle is the calendar. You know, it says that we use the calendar because we stay with the rhythms of the day and night and monthly, weekly, and yearly rhythms of the planets, the stars, and the moon, all that. And uh, the third principle is uh, we use the biotomic preparations. That's mm -hmm. something that the organic farmers don't do. There's no one else around the world that uses the biotomic preparations. And we all should do it. <laughs> Everyone should do it. But uh, and that's what Steiner said. He was, the whole earth should be, we should cover the whole entire earth with uh, biodynamics. And what are the reasons for using preparations, or especially these preparations? Well, the, the reasons why we use the product preparations. Hmm. I'll try that for me. The reasons we use the product preparations is, well, they work. They work. I mean, they do what they say they're going to do. They, they raise the, the protein so we can have better nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, Pfeiffer, Efren Pfeiffer, he experimented and he wrote, a, wrote in a book called uh, Nature and Subnature or something. Mm. Remember that? It's a book. <laughs> anyway, there was, he, he conducted, a, conducted a test, an experiment with uh, wheat. And uh, he, he proved in that experiment that he could raise the protein level. So mm -hmm. we know that biodynamics is, uh, can, is more nutritious mm -hmm. than any other food. That, the Steiner said, I, I, I cannot explain very well by English, but the um, most problem is the nutrition. Mm -hmm. That um, Then, yeah, the, now modern people, are, our, us, uh, we are, is um, cannot have the enough nutrition from the normal food. Mm -hmm. That's a big problem. Mm -hmm. And that is a reason of the nutrition. and. Then, Please tell more about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I cannot yeah, explain. Well, the, after the agriculture course, there's a, there a story about uh, Efren Pfeiffer asked uh, Steiner, he said, how come uh, people are just not getting it? I mean, how come they're, 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 they're practicing, they're meditating, and they're, they're doing everything, but they're not um, really you know, that, that spiritual as they can be or want to be? Mm -hmm. He said that was a problem of nutrition. And it, so that tells us right there that if we eat good and we're healthy, then we can become better thinkers and have more, somewhat more intelligence and more love for one another. And mm -hmm. connected to the more, you yeah. know, mission or mm -hmm. you know, I mean, cosmic mission. What can I say? Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. for the just to go healthy, that, that kind of mm -hmm. body things. Not only body things. Well, you, yeah, you you uh, evolve spiritually. You uh, become more. Mm -hmm more of a spiritual person. Mm -hmm. And how many preparations um, are in the biodynamic agriculture and which? So I found in this book, I found a very nice picture. <laughs> oh, yeah. From compost preparations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there, um, well, there were six, yeah. uh, there were six compost preparations, but there are also three other sprays. Mm -hmm. In biodynamics, we uh, like to prepare our soil first with prepared compost, or the or the uh, Maria Tunes recipe of barrel compost or cowpat pit or manure concentrate has three different names depending on where you are. But uh, and then we can spray with the 500 and the 501 if uh, those are other. Those are other sprays or the horns. So sprays. you collect these plants in the nature, like the nettle, the chamomile, or oak bark, the, mm -hmm. these six plants, and then you make from every plant one preparation. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you put every uh, preparation so that are six different mm -hmm. in the compost. Mm -hmm. Right. For, for every meter would be one unit. One unit would be like one spoon full of. The yarrow preparation. That's what we're working on here. Is the yarrow preparation. Yes, yeah, is. So this one of the, this one of these preparations is uh, this flower right here. Mm 
-hmm. And it uh, has a relationship to Venus. Uh, and uh, we added, what we're doing with biodynamics, we're adding uh, influences uh, from the stars and the planets into the, into the soil, into the compost. Mm -hmm. And it's really difficult to explain. But, uh, we called them nitrogen. Nitrogen yeah. is not for the dead powder of the nitrogen. Yeah, it's a living nitrogen from the nature. You know, the life forces is only come from the living being. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So our biodynamic is always keep keep the living forces or stay within the realm of the living. Yes. So, 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 so that's yeah. what I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, this. Um, so every of this plant has a special connection to a um, uh, to a different planet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you gave the force from this planet through mm. the plant in the compost. Yes. And the compost gives this power or energy to the field. To the yeah. soil, and the soil the gives it to the, the plants, and we take it from the plants. And then we, we give it, it back again and, uh -huh. with our thinking. It's also that it's for not really a um, little bit different for the fertilizer's way, because the compost is just a little bit. That is a make wake up for the that forces mm -hmm. the attack attack or no, knocking you wake up yeah. the soil it has a uh, force before it's like drinking mm. coffee in the morning <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the, the soil we have now has, has been killed or died off because of the chemical use you know and it's just dead soil we need living soil i mean that's what's healthy it's living soil mm -hmm. and what's what we believe about our compost we believe our compost is a living being. You know, there's life inside it, like a loaf of bread. There's yeast in a loaf mm -hmm. of bread. When you put, so, why can't there be life in a compost pile? Yeah. So we would treat it the same as we would our animals or our plants. If it's too dry, we water it. If it's too wet, we mm -hmm. turn it over. Yeah, I, I'm interesting. I, I, I I'm interesting because the, I was a teacher and then I uh, knew the. Part of school education, of education, and that idea is that children has already um, skill or mission in being, but the they the teacher and the adults take uh, we support for the children's mission is growing. You know, mm -hmm. they own children has their own mission, but uh, you know need to practice for the this mat modern system living away. So that's why we teachers is taking care of the uh, help for how to grow the your know, uh, one Keiko chan or Keiko chan's missions grew very well. So we are teacher is supporter. Mm -hmm. And farmer also same way. The land itself has the forces already but the lost it or Become weak because we use it because we have to yeah. eat something. Because we have exploited. Yeah. So too much. we give them just a suggestion, kind mm -hmm. of. Not to, the normal farmer said, "I want to. I need to give the fertilizer and mm -hmm. then give away and then get more, get more." more but it's not totally different idea. It's they have a they have their own mission. <laughs> Land has own mission, and then just forgotten or too weak. For, because the damage, so we give the certain advice a little bit, then they wake up. We add, we add intelligence to the soil mm -hmm. when we improve the nitrogen. Mm -hmm. when, when it it's not only soil. to use the soil, it's also to care for the soil. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. that we have to use the soil, that we have our harvest and we can eat something, but we know. have also to mm -hmm. uh, care yeah, like, for um, We have to remember that the earth is our mother, yeah. the mother earth. We would have to treat the earth just like it's our mother because it, we nourish from our mother. We get nourishment from our mother. Like an angel too. Angel taking care of us. Or sometimes they need to don't go there. It's a certain message. Angels, and yeah. then, so farmer also kind of 
taking care of it looks the land and looks animal and the, maybe they need that kind of support or something then to do things so mm -hmm. do you understand <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and uh, we uh, talked here about uh, about the planets and I found this for me very mm. interesting picture mm. I saw the first time mm. um, it's a human being connected mm -hmm. to all uh, yeah. planet signs well oh, these are actually not and planets uh -huh. these are uh, zodiac constellations they're star patterns ah, the, 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 the zodiac yeah. is, a, is a star pattern <laughs> mm -hmm. that the moon follows mm -hmm. and when the moon gets between this uh, constellation and the earth then it's on that sign. We call it, uh, say for instance, if um, Gemini is, is uh, the sign of the arms, mm -hmm. if... Uh, yeah, can you tell me something about this picture? Why oh, is sure. uh, okay. the Virgo here in the middle or um, the areas on the head? Or, okay, well that's yeah. just the way the, the, the star patterns are shaped like animals. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you connect the dots and then you, you, you use your imagination, you can imagine what a ram looks like. So that's why it's named the ram. And there's 12 of them. Mm -hmm. There's 12 constellations that the moon uh, goes through. And uh, this would be the Aries, the ram constellation. So when the moon gets between that constellation and, and the earth, mm -hmm. it, we have to bring that influence out of ourselves because it's being blocked by the moon. So when when we are when we are some people are good at being Aries when there's no well, other people are not Aries. That's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so those people would be called Aries people because they can bring it out of themselves more so than other people can. But and it'd be the same for all of these planets and it goes around twelve. 12 times some some of these uh, constellations are bigger angles so there are more more days like Virgo for instance is three or four days whereas Gemini and Aries are only a day or two uh -huh. so but when the moon blocked the when sign. The moon sock blocks those constellations mm -hmm. sometimes the constellation is so big that the, it uh, blocks it out and we're uh, Virgo at a longer time mm -hmm. because the moon is following that pattern that, that and when it comes to shore when it, it's, it's shorter and you use this knowledge uh, for your aquaculture oh yeah That's is wonderful. it connected to biodynamic yes it is we we, we have a biodynamic calendar mm -hmm. we have uh, in Japan now we have a uh, calendar that uh, our friends in Pokawapa Kent uh, Kyushu, his name is Dennis Pilad, and his wife Yoshiko. They've been, they were biodynamic farmers here for, they were the first biodynamic farmers here, mm -hmm. I think, weren't they, mm -hmm. Yeah. They've been here 25 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but at the beginning, they were translating straight from the Maria Toon calendar. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, after they got to know the rhythms of the patterns of the stars, how they're going to do, they got to figure out they could do it like their own. It's, it's, they're not changing, they're always the same. I mean, what is a Maria Toon calendar? The Maria Toon calendar, okay. Well, Maria Toon was a German scientist farmer that was, uh, that was uh, experimenting with uh, the signs, the, the, co the constellations, all of her life. She would plant radishes in a say a, a, an airy sign and another one in a, a Taurus sign and all four signs she would plant these mm -hmm. constellations and record the data and and then she would harvest them how did they keep under these certain signs and then she did lots and lots of experiments she did it all of her life uh, 50 years of research and her son is still doing it mm -hmm. still working on Matthias, mm -hmm. Matthias I think his name is mm -hmm. I've never met him but She's one of our heroes in biodynamics. Uh, mm -hmm. She started the calendar and made it real easy for everyone to follow. But there are other calendars. There's a uh, Brian Keats calendar of uh, Australia. There's the um, uh, the one in Pennsylvania, Kimberton Hills, mm -hmm. that has one. And mm -hmm. there's also um, 
But what does it thing. say to you um, okay. as a practical farmer? As a practical it says farmer, to you, yes. uh, what is written in the calendar? What uh, is there written, oh, today is the 20th of August, you have to do this and this? Or what is written in this calendar? Well, we uh, follow the mm -hmm. constellations because these constellations have an influence. Mm -hmm. Like we have to, like Aries, uh, when it's blocked, we have to have the Aries come out of us, our own, our own mm -hmm. uh, physique. Same with the plants. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to do that too, uh, even more so because they can't move around and they hide. So these plants, when they have an influence, they, they have uh, it's four basic elements, uh, four basic parts of a plant. There's a fruit, and a root, and there's a flower and a leaf. Mm -hmm. And that's how it goes in this order. From uh, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and Cancer, it'd be fruit, root, flower, leaf. And then all the other constellations would also be fruit, root, flower, leaf. And Maria Tuna says if you plant something, like lettuce for instance, you would want to do lettuce in a water sign or a, 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 a leaf sign because it's a leaf vegetable. Was, mm -hmm. Did I say fruit, root, flower, leaf? And it also could be fire, air, earth, and water. And it's always in that order. If you look Sweet in the times. calendar, yeah, three times. times a month, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, three times a four, month. Four elements, three times in two elements of the year. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, um, but it. every plant has uh, roots and leaves and flowers Are and we, fruits. Right, that's true. But uh, what do we want to eat? If yeah. we want to eat a carrot root, uh -huh. we want to work with root days. Mm -hmm. We don't want, uh, for instance, uh, lettuce roots. We wouldn't eat lettuce roots. Mm -hmm. We would eat lettuce leaves. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so we would use the leaf sign for working with the leaf plants. If we want to have a carrot, we want to eat the root, mm -hmm. so we use the root day. Root, root day is for, for planting. For planting, for cultivating, for watering, is for, it to, uh, um, and for harvesting. That is one of the most important parts, the harvesting and the root oh, sign. Oh. Rudolf Steiner said, that if you happen to not be able to plant uh, a lettuce leaf in a lettuce leaf sign, that it would the leaf the, uh, the seed would stay there in the ground until the leaf sign come around, and then it would germinate. Mm -hmm. And then, if so, uh, you don't uh, need the calendar. You just put the seed. Yeah, in. but there's a chance that the seed could stay in the ground dormant it's and, so catch a deep, and, and catch and catch a mildew or a disease or. Uh, an insect could eat it or something, you know, it could not germinate or germinate uh, poorly. Uh -huh. But on that sign, it has the full strength. Mm -hmm. It's a leaf plant, so it, the leaf sign is its most powerful point. So you have the seed, you, um, for example, for a carrot. Uh, you mm -hmm. take the seed, make it in the soil in the greenhouse, and um, yeah, maybe would, the carrot, the carrot would be yeah. Direct, <laughs> sorry. Direct so, yeah. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Okay, we take the lettuce. Okay, okay lettuce would be <laughs> and, in um, the then we are looking for a leaf day. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the lettuce grow and it's maybe this big. And then we decide to um, take the seedling, put it on the field. Mm -hmm. And we have to look again in the calendar right. when we will take the seedling out. Yeah? yeah. And the first time is for the harvest. To have a look in the calendar for when you will have or something, mm -hmm. weeding time or something. weeding. And, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. And mm -hmm. it's it's not really such a complicated as people think it is. In fact, it's really simplified. When uh, when we're doing our garden work, we consult the calendar, and we try to work on only those things that day, only uh, leaf things. So, in the next next day, it's uh, say leaf day it would be a, a root day or a mm -hmm. fruit day. So you start with the fruits mm -hmm. and then concentrate on them. And that, that keeps, it, keeps you kind of in order. Uh, it's kind of a mm, kind of a rhythm to stick with. You know? But you don't have to be dogmatic about mm -hmm. it. That's one thing that, okay. that Steiner had said is you don't have, and Maria Thun said, don't have to be dogmatic about For it. For example, it's very stormy, mm -hmm. but your seedlings uh, I'll wait can, yeah. next day or something. You can't put them out. If we can wait yeah. next to concentrate today, we can wait, but right. if you need to hurry, I mean, you it depends on the situation, you still you have just to use your, decide how. To you still have to use your organic farming common sense, you know, with the same mm -hmm. as uh, other organic uh, techniques as uh, companion planting, beneficial insect planting, crop rotations, and, mm -hmm. and uh, 
with all those techniques, you know, and watering. And, and um, here you have a Japanese version of the same calendar from my Ria too. Mm -hmm. right? But now they, but they're not copying it directly anymore. Mm -hmm. They know the star patterns and know where that planet's going to be from doing it for so many years that they've got the rhythm now. They know mm -hmm. that, so they, they're making their own. And they're doing their own articles now too. In mm -hmm. fact, we have an article in there trying to recruit uh, apprentices. We're trying to get, uh, trying to teach more violent farmers to for Japan and weather the world too. They can come here mm -hmm. and learn from us and then go where they want to. But yeah. we would hope they would want to stay here because this is a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. That's true. This is Tokachi Valley. It's so yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Got the beautiful mountains all around and rivers and just uh, good people too. Mm -hmm. Really nice people. Can we come back to the preparations? Okay. So we take the seedling on the field, and on the f in the field is already the compost mix in mm -hmm. the soil of the mm -hmm. field. And in this compost are six different preparations. But there are two more. Right. There are eight preparations. Nine so preparations. Eight and a half. <laughs> yeah. well, see, see yeah. that's the difference between uh, some mm -hmm. Europeans and Americans. Mm -hmm. they, you know, some Europeans don't believe that uh, the 508 is a preparation. Mm -hmm. They believe it's just something that Steiner added later on. Okay. But, but we in America, and especially Hugh Courtney, believes that uh, the 508 was probably one of the most important ones. Because he mentioned that three times in his agriculture course. Mm -hmm. you know, that Can you tell it first from the, the 508 other 508 is, uh, is the uh, horsetail weed. Mm -hmm. called uh, Av uh, Esquinetum, Esquisetum avenaris. Okay, uh, but can you at first explain the 500 and 501? Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the 500 is used after the soil is sprayed with uh, or prepared with the, the compost preparations. That's the first step. Is that uh, to do that. Then we make this horn preparation. It's a cow horn that we take uh, cow manure and we put it inside the horn and we bury it in the ground during the winter. Mm -hmm. And we dig it up in the spring and then we take it out of the horn and it doesn't smell like manure any, anymore. It's been transformed. <laughs> so we take it out of, out of the pit and we take it out of the horn then we mix it in with a little bit of rainwater. And then we stir it in a certain way, which uh, we stir it for an hour. We make a vortex with a clockwise um, rotation, then turn it around and go the other way with the vortex. We do that for an hour. We want to make a vortex where we can see the bottom, like, like, a, like, a, like a toilet. <laughs> but, uh, we make a nice vortex with that for an hour. Then we take a, a, a brush, like a um, small, like small broom, <laughs> Excuse me. A toilet brush. <laughs> and then we we'll spray it on the fields. What's next? And uh, why are you doing this action? Why we're we doing that action is to stir it thoroughly, Steiner says. Mm -hmm. it's, we call it dynamicizing because we're adding oxygen to the soil when we, when, mm -hmm. I mean to the water when we turn it like that. Because every time you turn it outside and come in with a vortex go fast, you see a little ring of bubbles in the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. Those bubbles are oxygen. And after, after 40 minutes of stirring it, you'll notice it takes less revolutions to turn it, to make a vortex. In the beginning, it, for example, it may take uh, 20, 25 times to go around to get a good vortex. Mm -hmm. But after 50, 50 minutes, it's easy. You can do it in uh, 10, 10 turns to mm -hmm. make a nice vortex. Mm -hmm. Because the water has loosened up. It has got more air and more oxygen in it, so it's more alive. And that's what it does. That's what it, when we add the, the horn manure in there, it's already super. But we're adding that uh, water to make it even super, more super. Mm -hmm. uh, and why super. A cow manure you could take from a pig? Pardon me? You could take the manure from a pig? No, no, no cow manure is ideal. Because cows have such a unique uh, system of digestion. You know, they have four stomachs. And, uh, and they have a, a thing that they do when they're chewing, this one is, you know, when they're, they bring up the cud up to their mouth and they're chewing on, you know, how they do. They're, they're actually meditating. If you notice the cow's eyes when he's chewing like that, he's not looking out. No, he's not looking out. I've, I've caught cows up against a wall before. I wonder what in the world is he looking at? You know, he's, he's sitting there chewing and, and he's at right in front of a wall. 
and he seems to be happy, you know, you know, relaxed, and he's, you know, what's he looking at? But if you look at his eyes, they're like glazed over, and he's like, 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 you would see someone meditating, like they're looking in, and that's what cows do, that's what he's doing to the manure. He's thinking about the digestive process and the manure, the, what the grass is going inside him, and how he has to move it around to all those three whole stomachs. So he's putting his thinking into his manure mm -hmm. and making it, you know. But when the manure comes out, it's not completely used up. It still has a potential to, to decompose even further. So you can't the, take just the manure and uh, put it in your water? Mm -hmm. Mm. You have to put it at first Maybe in the you horn could. I've then... never done that before, but when we prepare it with the cow manure in the horn, we're doing something very special with it. Mm -hmm. the, during the winter time, these uh, forces from these planets are stronger during the winter time because they're all inside the earth. We call them et elemental beings and nature spirits. They're more alive inside the soil. You, because of, when you, if you think about a tree, for instance, a, during the summer, the tree is alive during, during the summer because it's outside like this. The leaves are coming out, so it's alive out. Mm -hmm. But in the winter time, it has to go down into below the soil. And below the soil, it's more alive down there. The roots are more alive. The whole earth, the minerals, everything is a lot more alive during the winter time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The connection to the horn? So the connection to the horn. Yeah, as a, keep the energy for the inside over yeah. the Well, the horn is, is the the shaped such a way. In the in the yeah. So we saved the uh, special fertilizer, I mean, special manure from the really healthy, biodynamically cow's manure, fresh one, and then put the horn is a really special tool too for the. Please explain about that. <laughs> Then okay, that yeah. put the special yeah. time yeah, the, 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 on the, the ass. The, the horns function on a cow is not mainly to protect himself. You know, most people think a cow's got horns because he can run into people and mm -hmm. uh, run into things and protect each, each other. It's not true. Uh, I think it's Peter Proctor or um, uh, maybe um, one of these other pioneers that told us that uh, the the horn is actually an organ of digestion. There's gases from the stomach that come up to the esophagus, into the sinuses, and, and into the horn. We've done that too. We've, we found the cow skull blowed into the sinuses, and you could feel it come out where the horn was. So there's a connection there. The gas and the air goes up to the horn. Because the horn is shaped the way it is, it's forced to come back. That air is forced to come back. Mm -hmm. So whatever goes in the horn has to come back out. So when we, take, when we put this cow manure inside that horn, we put it in, in the soil when the earth is most alive then we get all that action going inside the horn uh, enhancing that manure and then coming back out so every time the, every time the, the, the rhythms change the, the whole constellation goes around you get it you get the Aries influence and it comes out and then you get the next day you get Taurus influence coming out then you get all the 12 uh, zodiacs going in and out of that horn then you have all the planets going in and out of that horn, the sun and the moon, they all these influences that are beyond mm -hmm. going inside this horn and, and transforming this manure. Remember I said when you take it out of the horn after digging it up, it doesn't smell like cow manure anymore. It smells like sweet soil, like uh, somewhere we mushrooms would grow, mm -hmm. something really rich in humus. Mm -hmm. You know how humus feels or it smells like mushroom soil. Mm -hmm. It's been transformed. And when we use it for a spray, we, we work with the uh, limestone element of it. But there's a, the other biodynamic uh, preparation we call 501, is a horn also. But instead of a cow manure inside, we put crystal inside it. And we bury it in the opposite time of the year. We bury it during the summer. Mm -hmm. so, and it works with the, the outer planets that are sending their forces inside the earth and then spray radiating back up. So we're having forces from the inner planets with the, the 500 coming from the top during the winter time. During the summer time we have the influences coming from the uh, outer planets going into the earth and being radiated back up. So this pushes the plant up and this one keeps it from growing too much. So mm -hmm. that's 
That's how we create and a balance with the 500 and the 501. On the same field? Yes. We or do. You, are, are there plants uh, they need more of 500 and other plants need more of 500? No, all ones, plants. So. We don't. We don't. We, we actually would not do it for the plants. Mm -hmm. We do it for the soil. Because mm -hmm. the yeah. soil is the but thing that. Mm -hmm. uh, the soil. Well, 501 does help with ripening and uh, the and the long shelf life and uh, other things, but mainly we do it for the soil because that's where mm -hmm. that's the, uh, the foundation of all the plants. Mm -hmm. Where they take and uh, with biodynamics, we realized that uh, the plants only take 20% of their nutrients from the soil. So with the 501 spray, we add the nutrients of the, the warmth and the light and uh, the warmth and the light. And with 500, we add the uh, water and the earth element. So we have a balance mm -hmm. of four of the four elements with okay. these two preparations. And if you would have only one of these bows, would you use only one? Or no, no, they, they they would have you would have a one sided kind of effect. You mm -hmm. would have uh, you would not have you could see balance. it on the plant? Mm -hmm. I've never done that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if anyone else has experimented with it or not. We're, we're kind of, um, I've only been doing biodynamics for eight years, so I, I just stick to what I know, what I've been doing, what I've been taught. And I've never tried one 500 by itself without doing uh, 500 later on, you know, because you have to have that balance. Mm -hmm. You can go as far as, as much as two weeks. Right. Uh, we've gone as much as two weeks before we sprayed the five, 501. I use um, strawberry for 501 because mm -hmm. I want to taste the good. I love to taste the good mm -hmm. strawberry. So, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, and yeah. it has an influence of the taste. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And it also uh, holds down the fungus diseases, because uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, not only the flavor but the, the 501 um, suppresses the fungus, keeps it below the ground, and makes it strong. And, yeah, and they're susceptible to fungus diseases, mm -hmm. strawberries are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, something else. Um, you're very proud. You have the first biodynamic cow baby on your farm of <laughs> whole Japan. And yeah, you're really practicing biodynamic, but you're not a certifi certified. We're not certified. Uh, uh, biodynamic organic farm. or biodynamic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell something about the reason? Yeah, it's difficult because in Japan is not so many, even though organic is not so many farmer, but also biodynamic is really, really f rare. Few, yeah, few. Few. Yeah, very few. And was then about 15, maybe, even that are trying biodynamics preparations. Yeah, we and try to be our um, Demeter standard, but um, then we are maybe very, very close to. But um, only our farm and other farmer is trying, but uh, not so many. And then we have not Demeter Association in Japan. Mm. And then if we want to take the Demeter certification, we need to ask to the international. But only one farmer cannot invite. It's difficult. But, it's um, difficult. Um, is it expensive for us? Yeah, and maybe. Uh, one people said uh, maybe w you need to pay one million yen or one million thousand yen or something big money. Yen. Yeah. Yen. Yeah. Not zero. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I, I, and I don't know where, but um, that at least 30 farmers need to in, ask, invite. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, too much cost for. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we have the first biodynamic cows uh, in Japan. But, uh, there's what, four of them, four with horns. And uh, Rudolf Steiner says that um, you should try to find horns and hooves from your local area or your, your own country, for instance. Um, and there are none here in Japan. There's, they, they cut the horns off when they're very young age because they're most like 99% of the cows in Japan are confinement cows, something like that. What he told us, and then so they cut them off because they're, they're confined, they're in small quarters, 
and they, they're afraid to get hurt with them and hurt each other, hurt each other cows with them. But we're not worried about that cutting the horns off because we have given plenty of space. We stick to the Demeter standards. It says mm -hmm. they have to have a lot of space and that uh, they have to be unchained, free to walk about anywhere they want and ha have access to the outdoors and stars and plants and the fresh water. We st we're doing all that. We don't treat them with hormones or steroids or any any synthetic. Uh, and because we have jerseys, they're very low maintenance anyway. They're they're not much not much problem. But uh, and if they do have a symptom or a problem, we treat them with homeopathy. Mm. So we we have really healthy healthy animals. And uh, but to to get the more biodynamic farmers involved and have more. Demeter certified beef well, with just these four cows, it's going to take a while, you know. We, and we need a bull, and we can't have a bull with just four cows, so we got to have a got to have like 30 cows for one bull. And then that one bull is going to breed all those cows, and then we'll have to have swap him in for another bull. So that means another biodynamic farmer is going to have to have a bull, and we have to have another biodynamic farmer to have a bull you know, at a farm, you know, a farm, big farm. So we, uh, we're, we're hoping that we can be the foundation for that. We'll be the first one to start to, the cows and a place where everybody else can come and get their biodynamic preparations. Cause that's what we do. We make a lot of biodynamic preparations for Japan because we want other biodynamic farmers to, to use them and to be biodynamic and then learn to make their own biodynamic and then spread the whole thing. You know? So we, uh, we're working hard at it. Trying to, in fact, and, Next weekend we have we'll be digging up our preps that we buried last week, and we're having inviting some friends to come along with some new farmers and some uh, some foreigners, and, even uh, from Africa, and some maybe mm -hmm. some Africans coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to sharing what we know. And mm -hmm. we're not trying to be rich or famous because you know we, uh, we it's not our lifestyle. Uh, what would we do with a lot of money? We would buy more. We buy more land. Or, you know, if we had money, we'd buy more <laughs> land. Or we'd, we'd try to help other people. We'd buy someone else some land, or mm -hmm. we'd pay people to help us. Or you know, we would use money for other things beside ourselves. We're not really uh, uh, consumptionist. Uh, we're, we're, oh. but, uh, we kind of we consider ourselves more like monks. Or priests, we don't. Um, we sacrifice a lot of time, time away from the farm, and dedicate ourselves to to doing the work. But, uh, we're not workaholics, of course, but we're we're dedicated to our work. <laughs> it could be boring. We could be workaholics. Yeah. We like we like what we do, though. Mm -hmm. We really love what we do. Every day is a different day, especially with the calendar. A day is a fruit day. We do the fruit things in the garden, and we take we stay with the rhythms. We have a good life. We, uh, we eat, eat, eat good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> eat tasty. Yeah, really good food. <laughs> and we have our CSA members, uh, they love it. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah. that's another thing with the Demeter program, too. Uh, we don't uh, we don't have anyone to, to sell to. I mean, uh, no one's, there's no organic products here in Japan. Very few organic products in the supermarkets, if any. And. Uh, so we, we have to try to change the, the consumer's vision. And then we have uh, uh, some friends that are helping with that, the image. There's the five farmers that are uh, doing the cow pastured milk scheme. They're labeling their milk as cow pastured milk. Mm -hmm. And that's something new for the Japanese people, mm -hmm. or you know, even Americans or foreigners, to cow pastured milk. People are going to look at that cow pastured milk. Well, what have I been drinking before? It's not cows, real natural cows. It's drinking that's that are eating grass. What are they eating? How are they being treated? You know, people are hopefully will question that, and then that will help us in Japan to. Uh, 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 show people about biodynamics and organics. If we could teach them organics first, it's easier for them to realize how biodynamics works. Yeah, I would come to an end, but
but maybe there's something you would like to edit to maybe I didn't ask a question you would like to tell or <laughs> you call me <laughs> Um. Uh, I would like to say something about Konami. Huh. She uh, was on fire. <laughs> she came to America <laughs> that, uh, after uh, to, to the Josephine Porter Institute to learn biodynamic preparation making. <laughs> she wanted she practiced a lot before she went to the JPI and just couldn't get it right. She was doing things like burning the horn, trying to get the horn out. She did all things that she didn't know how to do before. It's just trying. Just mm -hmm. trying. But uh, then she came to the Josephine Porter Institute on fire. She wanted to learn everything. She was taking notes and taking pictures and asking questions and, you know, she really wanted to do this. And I thought, oh, wow, what a, what a, what a great woman, you know. She wants to learn all this and take it back to her country and help improve her country. Well, she will need some help. <laughs> so, uh, so we joined up with her, and uh, now we're doing it together. And uh, I'm, I'm happy we did. Well, we're happy we're doing. We're happy to be together. Yeah, <laughs> we're happy to be together and doing what we're doing. We're we're proud of ourselves. But. Uh, Great woman. She loves her country. She loves her people. It's a good age to talk to. He's on my angel. <laughs> God, you know. God, God, you know. God. No, you're the gardener. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the livestock man. You know. Maybe. No, God, God, you know. God, you know. Guardian angel, you know. Yeah. So you just need more hands mm -hmm. on the farm. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can use some hands. Yeah. We, not just here on the farm, but on these other farms too. You know, we need more biodynamic farmers here coming to Japan right. because the young people are becoming uh, interested. You know, the young people from Tokyo are getting too much computers. They're getting, uh, they want to get away from that uh, high tech stuff and get out in the country and get back to basics. We would like for those guys to come here. We show them the basics. We show them how to, how to get started with farming with little or no money. That's what we did want to call mm -hmm. We came here to Japan. I think I had uh, $60 in my pocket. And she had, of course, her government money from... And we bought this little house. It's a portable house. It's a, you can move it. And after that, we were broke. So we had to first start off with... A, I think we started off as a part-time job. We got a little money up. Then we got enough money to build an oven, a brick oven. So we built the oven and wood-fired oven so we could use wood to bake bread. For every $5 of flour, you get $50 of bread. So we said, well, this is how we're going to make our money until spring. And in the spring, we'll start recruiting CSA members and then start planting. In fact, we were recruiting CSA members before we even plowed the soil. <laughs> we, we recruited CSA members while there's snow still on the ground. You know, and said, come on, give us some money. We'll give you back vegetables in the fall or in the spring. And it worked. We started off with mm -hmm. 10 CSA members. So anybody can do it mm -hmm. in any country. You know, and if you're a biodynamic farmer and you make the commitment that you want to be, you want to grow food for the other human beings, the angels will help you. Mm -hmm. they, they helped us tremendously. Yeah. And you don't really know it. It's and you need to find land. Yeah. It? And land's easy to find here. Mm -hmm. I won't say easy, but it can be done. Mm -hmm. we, and that's an important information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just, the the farmhouses are becoming empty here, mm -hmm. while the farmers are living in the towns. Because remember, they're just tractor drivers. The big mm -hmm. uh, food companies just, you know, they keep all the trucks in a garage in town. And then they put a tractor on the back of the truck. They'll drive from their apartment in town while they're having a party and everything every night or whatever. And, they get in their truck and their tractor and they drive out to the fields and they do their plowing and cultivating and they drive back to the apartment, party down some more until, it's, until the government says go back out and spray again. So they'll go out and spray again and come back and then, you know, that's not farming. That's, uh, well, I don't know what it is, but it's not farming. Yeah. And so we want to stop that kind of trend and 
catch these young people. So you don't do that, you know. You can start farming and have a good lifestyle doing it. A biodynamic CSA farm is uh, it's biodiverse. If uh, if you become a wolfer, you want to travel around the world, try to go to a biodynamic CSA farm because you'll have all kinds of food. Some organic farms you go to if you're wolfing, what well, do monocropping? You know, you have one farm that does like all organic carrots. You know, and what are you going to eat? And you can't eat all carrots all the time. But a biodynamic farm, CSA, or just a biodynamic farm in general, there'll be a lot of different kind of foods there on it. And a lot of stuff to learn to do, you know. Yeah. I guess that's it. We, we want farmers and we can train and we have a good time too. It's not all, it's not all work. <laughs> we have a good time. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.